All right. Hello again. This is Foghorn with another installment of Flight School Academics for this, the 4th of May. May the 4th be with you. Uh, 2953 or 2020, it was 2954 or 2024 if you were stuck in the past. This presentation is part of an ongoing series of academics for the members of the Aurora Republic, the premier role playing organization in Star Citizen. If you're new to the Aurora Republic or visiting for the first time, let me start by saying welcome. Glad to have you with us. Love to hear from you if you're interested in hearing more from us. We are a lawful good organization focused on roleplay, exploration, and social interaction are currently active in recruiting on Spectrum and Gilded. All right, tonight we are continuing on our uh, money-making uh, how-tos here uh, on uh, Star Citizen, and we're going to talk about bounty hunting tonight so we can get through. So process loop, we'll talk about the equipment locations and uh, any notes on how to do bounty hunting efficiently. So uh, basically, the uh, game loop is pretty simple as you take a bounty hunting contract off of the contract manager, travel to the location where the bounty is and then kill him or her uh, and get paid from it. Um, however, there is a step prior to that is you do have to have licensing involved, and I'll talk more about licensing for um, in a minute. Uh, but you have to have licensing of, a, of the proper level before you can start taking uh, bounties of a certain level. So, and like I said, we'll discuss all that in a moment. As far as equipment, vehicles, pretty much anything that can shoot, uh, you can potentially use for uh, bounty hunting. Um, of course, uh, things that are more agile and more fighter like are probably a better bet. But uh, anything that can uh, fly around in space can do the spaceborne ones, and anything that can manage to land down at a location can go do the FPS ones as well. So, uh, personal gear, of course, uh, you're going to need weapons and ammo because we do not have a non-lethal option yet, uh, but that is coming in the future. Um, you're going to need some armor to protect yourself. You probably want med guns and med pens with you to make sure that you're OK. And then, of course, desired but not absolutely required would be a backpack for looting and a multi-tool with a tractor beam for floating things around when you need to. Um, OK, so where are you going to find these? Um, like I said, you're going to find the contracts on your Moby Glass and the contract manager. Under the bounty hunter uh, tab, you're going to go to accept a mission, accept track it, share it with your friends if you got multiple people in your party, and that will give you a nav marker that will guide you to uh, where you want to go. Hello, MVEC. Um, they can be located just about anywhere and everywhere. So um, you can bounty mission can end up in orbit with the target being in uh, flying around in space. Usually they're in asteroid fields or debris fields because CIG loves to give you things to run into whenever you're trying to take out uh, a bounty. Um, if you are, uh, they can end up uh, being a ship to ship combat over the surface down in the atmosphere, which will always be over some sort of a point of interest. So you will be able to quantum travel there um, to go get that bad guy. And then they can also be, depending on which ones you take, you can also be actually an FPS type engagement because they could be down in a bunker, in caves or in outposts uh, where you'll have to get out of your ship and go handle it on foot. Um, notes. OK, so licensing and how that plays into bounty hunting um, before you can take a contract for a certain level of risk target, you first have to have a license for that level of risk target and of course they start at the lowest one vlrt for very low risk target and go all the way up to extreme risk target uh, when you first get your vlrt uh, license then you will now be able your contract manager will now populate with vlrt missions vlrt bounty hunting targets uh, on your on your uh, contract manager that you can take, but they will not show up until you have that license. So the bounty hunter rep and bounty hunters guild, your rep with the bounty hunters guild is what determines what licenses you're eligible to get. And once you have those then those license licenses control what bounties are offered to you because they won't offer you a higher risk than what you're licensed for that first uh, mission that you take. To get a license when you the when when the the bounty hunting mission is your licensing mission, instead of you getting paid, you have to pay for that. And you can see the schedule of fees that they charge right there. So if your VLRT license will cost you 500 creds, 
um, all the way up to the ERT will take 3,000, will be a 3,000 pe uh, cred payment to the Bounty Hunters Guild. And after that, you have those licensees. Those are the, the letters are in yellow because that's what will show up uh, in parentheses um, in, the con in the contract title. Um, and uh, those will uh, let you, that also lets you know that that's an NPC target. So group warrant. Um, similarly, will be three NPCs at three different locations. Uh, they can all be at the same location. They could have two at one location and one at another, or all three could be at all three different locations. So those are more lucrative because you're going after three bad guys um, within a specific time frame. So they are timed. It gives you something like 45 minutes to go clip all three bad guys. Uh, the other NPC one is the entrenched target. If you see that uh, code, that uh, uh, those two code words basically in the in the title, that's an entrenched target. And that means it's going to be an FPS target who's going to be down in one of those bunkers, caves or outposts that you're going to have to get out of your ship and go handle person to person fo on foot. In addition to those NPC bounties, there's also player bounties, so you can have some PVP in here. Um, those sort of code word that's in the uh, title of the contract, it'll say it's suspect apprehension. Suspect apprehension is a player with a crime stat of three or greater. Um, and that's when, um, so if you get a crime stat three or greater, that's when the system starts generating bounties on you. And if you are looking for bounties, then suspect apprehension will tell you that that's a player that you're going to be going after, not an NPC. Um, fugitive recovery similarly is a player, but that is not a, that is a player who has already been caught and was in Clusher prison and has escaped. And so you're now going after a, a escapee again that will be a player um okay so reputation is what controls all of these both with the bounty hunters guild and with the individual jurisdictions starting off there is a bounty hunters guild it is ubiqu it's the ubiquitous uh, licensing authority throughout the uee um you cannot do any bounty hunting before you have uh, a license for whatever level you're at. And these, um, the reputation is separate from the jurisdiction's reputation, but it does, your licensing does apply to all bounty uh, hunting contracts, regardless of what jurisdiction they, they're in. Um, all bounty, hun hunting, bounty hunting contracts that you complete gives you both reputation with the jurisdiction it's in and with the Bounty Hunters Guild as well. So. Bounty hunting is a sort of a double bonus when it comes to rep because you're getting both you're getting both uh, bounty hunting rep with the jurisdiction and with the guild overall. When you have done so many uh, X number of bounties at the licensing level that you're at and it's time for you to go up a one reputation tier, that's when they offer you the next more difficult um, risk level of licensing. So when you get. When you do so many VLR team missions and you have that gives you enough rep to go up to the next one, then you get your LRT um, license and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, like I said, licensing is controlled by your Bounty Hunters Guild rep and the jurisdiction's contracting is controlled by that licensing. So uh, you could go to Crusader and if all you have is a VLRT license, when you go to Crusader, you're only going to see bounty hunting. VLRT bounties in Crusader. If you fly over to R Corp, you're only going to see VLRT level bounties over at R Corp because it's the Bounty Hunters Guild licensing that controls that. Uh, however, within the individual jurisdictions, your reputation is separate um, and the jurisdictional uh, reputation for bounty hunting is what controls your like bonuses for payouts and stuff like that. So you can only get bounties issued uh, within that jurisdiction and according with the license, but um, and the rep that you get um, will only count for within that jurisdiction. Um, so doing bounties over in Crusader will give you bounty hunting rep with Crusader and with the Bounty Hunters Guild, but R Corp won't care about your bounty hunting rep that you've done over at Crusader you'll have to basically go earn rep with them as well. Um, the, well, I said the jurisdiction's contracting is controlled by the licensing from the Bounty Hunters Guild, but your reputation with that jurisdiction is where you get the like plus 10% or plus 15% payout, depending on um, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, how much or how high your rep is with that jurisdiction. Hello, Drake. Okay, so coming, uh, you know, sometime in the future, um, they are working on non-lethal weapons and gear. So bounty hunting will be changing in the future. Right now, bounty hunting just means murder. You just go out and assassinate the target um, just because they don't have a non-lethal, you know, it hasn't been built into the game yet. But that is be that is being worked on. So in the future, they will have things like manacles and tasers and knockout gas or whatever. And you'll be able to instead of uh, just going out and killing the target like you do now, you'll actually you'll have to figure out how to capture the target. They've gone part way with that as far as when it comes to ship to ship, because now we have soft death. So you can actually just pound on the guy's ship until it's soft deaths, but then stop shooting at him so he doesn't blow up and then figure out how to go board to go in, um, hopefully in the future to go in and capture the target non-lethally. Um, put them in a uh, a uh, stasis chamber effectively, and now they are being handled like cargo. That's the idea anyway, or at least what they've talked about. And then you'll have to return them to some sort of a security office or a sheriff's office or somebody, uh, someplace like that um, alive uh, to turn the bounty in um, so that you can get paid. Um, so that will, like what we're doing now for bounty hunting is not... The end state um, and it's going to get more complicated because we're going to have to you know like i said you're going to have to take them alive and then you're going to have to transport them from a to b and turn them in <clears throat> for the player who has been caught as the bounty uh it's still a little bit nebulous as far as how that's going to happen but at some point in that process they're going to um you know they're going to kind of get agent smith uh with you know, basically, once they're in the stasis chamber, they're basically going to get Agent Smith with an NPC version of them. They're going to go ahead and wake up over in Clusher so they can start their jail time, even if you haven't, even while you as the bounty hunter are in the process of transporting them from A to B, or at least that's the way we think um, it's going to happen and, and what they've sort of talked about on ISC and SCLs. Uh, vehicles such as the Avenger Stalker, the uh, Anvil Hawk, and the Cutlass Blue are going to become. Um, are basically going to kind of come into their own for, for bounty hunter. Those three are specifically made for bounty hunting. They have the uh, basically stasis chamber or chamberers, the, the capture pods uh, to put your bad guy in and store them. So right now, uh, all three of these are in the game now, but those uh, stasis pods and things are just there for looks at the moment. They will become fu functional when we start getting this non-lethal uh, abilities into the game. Uh, just as a, a reminder from last week's where we talked about uh, mercenary contracts or or the, the security contracting, remember that bounty hunter and mercenary are two different things. You know, uh, mercenary is a security contract where you are plussing up a security force, usually at a bunker, or you're going to go retake a bunker that has been taken over by the bad guys. Um, whereas bounty hunter is you're going to get paid for going and taking out a specific target. So within a jurisdiction, um, you will see that you actually have two sets of reputation that are being um, um, tracked. You have a bounty hunting reputation. You have a security. Uh, sec so security contracting missions are under the mercenary tab on the contract master and bounty hunters under the bounty hunting tab. And those are two different things. That wraps up this installment of Academics with Foghorn. Hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you have any questions I didn't answer, please feel free to contact me via email, the Gidded Spectrum, or of course, comment section below if you're watching but later. I'll answer it as soon as I see it, the best of my ability. Hit those follow and subscribe buttons as appropriate. Comment your comments in the comments. We do like to read them. And uh, you can find out more information about the Aurora Republic at aurorarepublic.space or of course at robertspaceindustries.com slash aurororgs slash aurorarep. I'll see you next time. Foghorn signing off. Wishing a very pleasant remainder of your morning, afternoon, or evening. Thank you so very much for watching.